Hi, my name is Dave, and today we're going to look at this quirky, charming, fascinating Celestar by Fecker. It's a six inch telescope. I love a telescope that's quirky and unusual. I also love a, a telescope that's got uh, high quality attributes. This one has everything in spades. Uh, in addition to that, for being so old, it's in beautiful The Maxutra of Newtonian. You can see the corrector plate right here in the front. So this has a corrector plate like any Maxutov, and then it's got a mirror in the back, and there's a spot on the front, and it comes back to a secondary mirror, which is right here, and it bounces it out like that. That's one of the things that's most unusual. You see very, very few telescopes like that. Notice that as you rotate the telescope around, the, um, the eyepiece doesn't go very far. It gets into uh, different positions, but not much. And especially if you were looking at something on the ecliptic, which would be up there, you would be looking here. You could look at a careful couple of things on the ecliptic. This telescope is very, very good for planetary and lu lunar observations. It's an F-15 telescope, so it's got a lot of focal length, a lot of... A lot of magnification. Let me show you this unusual mounting for the finder. Here's the finder, and it's a pretty standard finder. It does have something unusual. That's a that's an inch and a quarter eyepiece, which is pretty unusual even in modern day finders. Um, so, and it's a just a 30 millimeter objective, but large eyepiece. This mounts on here like so, and the finder is pretty much fixed inside this uh, finder mounting. So the way you adjust it, it's going to be right down here. I'll show you how that works. We'll start with a ball bearing. The ball bearing is trapped. There's a place for it. There's a place for it right there and right there. So the ball bearing is going to be trapped. And then the four screws will change the orientation. It's a little bit strange. It doesn't quite give you the flexibility that you might like to have. Boy, is it unusual. One of the most interesting things about this telescope. I mean, there's a lot of interesting things about this telescope. Okay, so now that you can see that it's, um, it's pretty, I've got it tightened up at least, more or less. So, it's now um, all set, except for the fact that you need to adjust it. So you might have to need... You might need to loosen this one, tighten that one, etc. Back and forth very much like you would with a mirror cell. Except it's got four, which is just a little tricky. Anyway, um, that's how you're supposed to align the finder. And I found that it works pretty well. It's a little, it takes some getting used to, but it does work. Here's a close-up look at the eyepiece turret. This just slides into the standard inch and a quarter focuser and the eyepiece turret has three different slots uh, they're uh, purpose designed for the three specific eyepieces this eyepiece is the 25 millimeter Hastings um, and it's a 90 power eyepiece this one is the 12 millimeter Hastings right here and this is the 8 millimeter ortho and they're pretty much designed to be fairly much par focal. That is, you won't have to focus very much when you change from one to the next. And I found it to be a real pleasure. These are very nice. They're, first of all, they're very nice, high quality eyepieces and good optics. So here's your low power. You, it's very, very simple to crank it up to the next power and then the next power. It's a nifty little device. It's also got um, some very quirky and interesting things. Here's the slow motion, and you can see it moving there. I'll show you a close-up of that. So the declination slow motion, it doesn't give you full declination slow motion, but when you find something and then you want to tweak it in just a little bit, there you have just the fine last little bit of motion that you need. It's plenty, it's most adequate, uh, so that when you're looking at something you can tweak it just a little bit. It's also got slow motion right ascension. It's got a clock drive. This is a, 
um, standard AC synchronous motor clock drive, and it uh, it has a slow well it has a clutch, so you've got a built-in clutch there, and then the slow motion here for tweaking it ever so slightly. You can move it a little bit one way, a little bit the other way in right ascension. Okay, now we're looking inside the fork arms here. And here is the, this, raw, this little structure here leads to the declination axis. And this is the slow motion in the declination. And you can see that I'm getting just a little bit of motion. And believe it or not, that's enough to center something. Um, so it's a very convenient uh, telescope. It is a little awkward. I mean, you can reach both of these from this position, but in some positions, especially if you were looking up towards the pole or somewhere up there, you could get into some extremely strange positions. The eyepiece is down here. Um, it's probably no worse than a Newtonian. At least a Newtonian on a that doesn't have a rotating tube on an equatorial uh, mount. So anyway, it's it's completely wonderful. And look at the beautiful paint. This is what they call Zolotone, but I really like the beautiful Zolotone color. It's just charming, complete, and very, very robust also. It just really uh, handles any kind of punishment quite well. This telescope is very awkward. So there's really only one way for a person, a single person, to handle this by himself. And all you need now is your handy Allen wrench. That way, even that way is barely manageable. Let's talk about how you collimate this scope. This is a Maksutov Newtonian, so it's a bit more complicated than a standard Newtonian. And uh, it's lucky that the whole thing is made with great mechanical precision. This is comparable to a Tinsley, a couple of Tinsleys that I own, in the sense that these things are just beautiful. The machining is superb. You have uh, three standard sort of collimation push-pull bolts up here. So just use a screwdriver and adjust these push-pull type things. That's for adjusting the corrector plate. Uh, here in the back you've got a couple of things, a couple of complicated things here. First of all, this little pop-off lid. And then inside here is the secondary, which is on a long stock. Uh, here's a picture of that. So anyway, there's uh, several little Allen screws, push-pull Allen screws here. Uh, and those will adjust the angle of that thing. It's extremely, because it's on a long stock, it's extremely sensitive. So that has to be done very carefully. And then finally, last but not least, you have these three sets of push-pull screws here that you adjust with a standard uh, screwdriver. And the instructions in the manual are extremely complicated. You basically have to tear the whole thing apart from and start from scratch with, uh, you know, some targets and cross wires and stuff. It's a little bit overcomplicated and probably unnecessary because this thing is mechanically so perfect that you can easily, I mean, I just locked it in to the tightest position for all the adjustment screws and it's a, uh, it's nearly perfect as is. So a little tweak here, a little tweak there, you could easily, by looking at a star, uh, and I've done scopes like that, that's probably, in this kind of scope, maybe the best way to do it. Just look at a star and very patiently, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, one thing about this scope is, I doubt with the way this thing is built, it's extremely robust. I doubt that you would ever have to touch the, the collimation again, unless something really serious happened, or you took it apart. Um, and then, in that case, you might have to recollimate. But I think once you get this collimated, it's not going anywhere. The thing is built like a tank. 
I hope you've enjoyed this tour of the Fekker Celestar 6 from the late 1950s. Thank you for watching.